Hello everyone, my name is Alan Moreno, and this presentation is on student activism in the Chicano movement as inspired by Plan de Santa Barbara. The East LA powder keg had finally blown up. Tens of thousands of students from high schools all over the East LA area had walked out. For years, Chicanos were pushed into vocational jobs instead of encouraged to go into higher education. The students were fed up with the lack of educational opportunities, the state's refusal to teach nuestra historia, our history, and the unusual and inhumane punishments that Chicano students received. Among the demands of the students were bilingual education, a curriculum developed around Mexican and Chicano history, and more teachers of Chicano descent. In April of 1969, members of the Coordinating Council on Higher Education Council made up of Chicano students and professors created at Plan de Santa Barbara, the Santa Barbara Plan. This manifesto was heavily inspired by a Plan Espiritual de Aztlan, which was drafted a month prior at the Denver Conference and primarily focused on Chicano nationalism. El Plan de Santa Barbara, on the other hand, was key in creating what we now know as Chicano and Chicano studies in higher education. The plan starts off with a powerful manifesto in which the council writes, for all people, as with individuals, the time comes when they must reckon with their history. For the Chicano, the present is a time of renaissance, of renacimiento, of rebirth. Our people and our community, El Barrio and La Colonia, are expressing a new consciousness and a new resolve. Recognizing the historical task confronting our people and fully aware of the cost of human progress, we pledge our will to move. As a result, the self-determination of our community is now the only acceptable mandate for social and political action. It is the essence of Chicano commitment. The need to create Chicano studies, as opposed to Mexican-American studies, came as a result of the cultural nationalist ideology of the Chicano movement. In other words, they were pushing back against the assimilation of Mexicans to Americans, the idea of Mexican-American. With this plan, the council demanded the UC and CSU system implement the following. The recruitment of Chicano students, staff, administrators, and faculty. Develop a curriculum and major related to Chicano cultural and historical experience. Develop support, research, and publication programs, as well as develop community cultural and social action centers. This new program would emphasize social and economic inequality in El Barrio. With so many groups advocating for Chicano rights like the Brown Berets and the Mexican American Youth Organization, the plan called for these groups to form into a united group called Movimiento Estudiantil Chicano de Aztlan, or simply MECA. The goal of MECA was to respond as a unit to oppression and racism, and that will work in harmony when initiating and carrying out campaigns of liberation for our people. The liberation of our people is a call to reject the assimilation of Mexican Americans into what the plan calls a gray upon gray pseudo-culture of technology and materialism. Furthermore, the council wanted Mecca to be a spirit of unity, of brotherhood and resolve, to undertake a struggle for liberation in a society where justice is but a word. Mecca is a means to an end. It is with this goal in mind that Mecca functions as a tool for education, where the Chicano can write their own history, their own curriculum, and cater to the needs of El Barrio. The Santa Barbara Plan credits groups like the Brown Berets for helping increase awareness of the Chicano movement for both Chicanos and not Chicanos. Additionally, the plan credits them for helping out in El Barrio. To this end, the council proposes the class of Mexican American and the schools, which requires the teaching of the Brown Berets. However, who are the Brown Berets? The Brown Berets evolved from the group Young Chicanos for Community Action, which, like the Santa Barbara Plan called for, utilized political action. The YCCA was a group created by Chicano students in high school. Fed up with police harassment of Chicanos, the YCCA decided to take a different approach and change their names to the Brown Berets. The Brown Berets wore military-style clothes and became combative crusaders on behalf of justice for Chicanos. During the East LA blowouts, the Brown Berets would protect student protesters from police brutality and were one of the first groups to call for the end of the Vietnam War. In many ways, the Brown Berets were the Chicano version of the Black Panthers. In June of 1968, the Brown Berets published a 10-point program that echoed the demands of student protesters, but also demanded a civilian police review board to screen police officers before they were placed in Chicano communities. 
In short, they were the protectors of Chicano activists. The common criticism of the Santa Barbara plan is its exclusionary language. The plan championed social justice and self-determinism, but did so through the lens of machismo and brotherhood. Early Chicano student groups were often male-dominated, devoted to machismo, or simply didn't fight for gender equality. Women were often overlooked in the Chicano movement, which prompted Chicano student activists at CSU Long Beach to form a group to address these issues. The group was called Hijas de Guadalajara, the name they got from the first newspaper publication. Maylee Blackwell, author of Chicana Power, interviews members of the group. In one interview, members Nancy Nieto and Sherry Moraga note the gender division of labor in the Chicano movement. Moraga specifies how much of the work of organizing Chicano resistance was dependent on women's labor while simultaneously making it invisible. This line of thinking directly reflects how many Chicano movements were organized, where women were given roles of organizing, fundraising, or regulated to cooking and cleaning because of rooted gender norms. Chicana activists were not seen as real political actors, despite their labor being the foundation of the Chicano movement. Las hijas del Cautemoc embodied the spirit of the Santa Barbara plan while remaining inclusive. Now we look toward the present and the future. The time of writing this, the 2022 midterms have passed. While I won't get too much into the politics, one thing to note is the youth voter turnout. Many news sites are calling attention to youth voter turnout for saving many Democratic nominees in swing states. As history has shown, and as your generation will hopefully continue, it is youth activist groups that will advance the nation forward.